What's up guys, the name's Rana Dragnilla and welcome back to Seduce Me Yo Tome. So last we left off, we got to know more about Matthew's past and how he was trying but he was always put down. Then Diana tried to convince him to come back and stepped an all time lull. But he managed convin um he managed to drive her out and now we either get to be get together with him, like you know, the banging, or we just not. And you know, I'm that type of girl where just like bang me so why don't we just go on with this but now shall we i could seduce me yeah i couldn't believe the two words that came out of my mouth it made the most sense to tell him yes i needed him i wanted him those two words must have made something in him finally break if you guys don't want to see all this but which i'm pretty sure you all do you could just skip this Matthew gently wrapped his arms around me and went back to kissing me passionately. I could feel the energy was about me, making me open one eye to see blue light glowing around us. When the light subsided, I was in my bedroom on my bed with Matthew above me. I stared as Matthew held a look of both lust and love. My heart skipped a beat simply from his gaze on me. This was okay. I wanted to see all of him and give myself to him. I gently guided his head to me, kissing him slowly and bringing him further into the mood. Matthew slid both his hoodie and his shirt off and tossed them to the side before cradling my head in his hands and kissing me deeply. I felt heat rise in my body, making me undo the tie underneath my collar and release the buttons on my own shirt. Quickly, I removed the shirt and vest, making Matthew stop kissing me and stare in slight surprise. I was simply in a bra, but I could feel a blush invade my cheeks. My shy side began to fester in my mind. Did I really want this? To undress before a demon? No. This was the man I loved, and yet, I felt my innocence drape over me in almost shame. I needed to fight it. I quickly rolled both of us over to where I was sitting on Matthew's lap, staring down at him. Matthew sat up looking up at me with one of the most sexiest smiles I had ever seen. So we're gonna be top! Okay, that's nice. Okay. Matthew pulled me close, knowing I was still shy, and began to kiss my lips over and over. Each kiss was his promise to keep me safe, keep me comfortable, love me. I kept my arms wrapped around Matthew, taking each kiss he gave and giving my own kisses in return. I didn't know if it was the fact we were both top mood, or maybe I just craved his touch, but I didn't want to let him go. However, as he held me, I could slightly feel the shiver of his hands. Was I his first? He wasn't going to tell. He wanted me to enjoy this moment, but was afraid of screwing up. His shivering hands showed me his emotions perfectly. As he laid me down and knelt over me, Matthew smiled and finally embraced me as we both desired. The pleasure between us would be heavenly when we go through it together. I closed my eyes and gave myself to Matthew. My body, my mind, my soul, it all belonged to him as he held me. His body, his mind, his soul, it all belonged to me as I gave into his embrace. His kisses and fingers over my skin would forever engrave themselves into my memory as our passion rolled through incredible heights. Our breaths and moans to each other equally sounded and echoed like a blissful chant we never wished to end. We, be we kept moving, loving, feeling every inch of our bodies until we had had enough and I was enveloped in his embrace. Skin to skin, heartbeats matching, we held each other in the glow of the aftermath. I nuzzled my head in under Matthew's chin as he held me close. I love you. I love you too. Just to hear those words come from Matthew's mouth made my heart flutter. To hear, to hear me answer made my soul warm in glee. I could feel both of us sink into a peaceful sleep together. It was the best sleep I had had in days and I was happy. I had love and I had my happiness. My life was simply perfect. When I opened my eyes, I found myself staring into Matthew's bare chest. I blushed, but looked up to see Matthew still sleeping. His sleeping face 
made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it. I was lying next to a man I had grown to love with all of my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe, and as the tender moment we had shared just replayed in my head, I couldn't help but smile and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, giving me more of his warmth. I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened and made me sit up without waking the man next to me. I felt my legs move and bring me to my balcony window, where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio. Damn it, Diana! I stared wide at Diana, who sat cross-legged on the railing of my balcony with a glowing red eye, stare upon me. I opened my mouth to object, but Diana stopped me. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. By the way, how was it exactly? Demons are the best lovers, after all. I glared. What do you want, Diana? Well, I just wanted to see how you truly feel. You know, without him around to influence you. What are you talking about? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean about these feelings of yours, and to give you your salvation. What was Diana up to? This was beyond crazy. Nothing she had done made sense. Why was I still alive at this rate? What's keeping you from just killing me and taking them? <laughs> you are not worth my time. Not worth your time? What are you, afraid something might happen? At All at once, I felt my body being lifted into the air and moved over past the railings, leaving me with nothing but the ground below to threaten me with a collision with death. Oh, trust me, dear. I'm not afraid to kill you. I can drop you right now and leave your body to rot until the morning when the boys would find you. I dare you to do that right now. I wanted to speak, but the thought of her letting go and letting me fall to my death scared my voice into silence, and I then chuckled and rolled my body back to the balcony, setting me down gently. Alas, if I kill you, then the boys would never come with me willingly back to the demon world, and then I'd have to chase them all around the world, or kill them and drag them back. But then their father wouldn't be happy and blah, blah, blah. Too much work. Diana seemed very business-oriented, as if the boys were cargo more than men. It irked me, but she, that she then smiled. I'm giving you one chance to denounce your love for the demon in your bed, and let me take him and the other boys back to the demon world. And why, may I ask, would I do that? There are so many reasons why, actually. There's the reason that he's a demon and you're a human, so you two can never truly have a happily ever after. Then there's the reason that demons truly do not know how to love, despite what he may proclaim. The list goes on and on. That's a load of bullshit. The point is, if you give me the boys, I will promise you eternal happiness. Eternal happiness? That's right. I have the power to give you anything you desire. Power, men, women, money, fame. Name it, and it's yours. A demon never goes back on their word, and I have the power to obtain anything you wish. Our deal is our contract. I could only stare in shock. This was a dream. It had to be. However, Diana smiled an almost genuine smile at me, shaking me for the reality of the situation. She would never smile like that. Don't you wish to be free of your destiny? Your father constantly berating you to become the next CEO of your grandfather's company. H how did you... I was almost floored and surprised. How did Diana know all of this? She was a succubus, yes. But how could she know anything beyond sexual desire? She wasn't Damien. Diana chuckled and leaned back against her arms. Just because I play with hearts and sex doesn't mean I don't know my way around the human mind. You happen to be an open book of information, but I digress. I can give you your freedom with ease. It'll be like you were always meant to have it. All I ask is that you hand over the boys. What do you say? Was I seriously being given the, this choice? The man I love for anything I wanted? A demon like Diana was powerful enough, yes, but I, did I even want to consider giving up the man I loved? Hell no! She must have been crazier than I thought. I glared. Absolutely not. 
Diana sighed and stood up onto the railing. What I wasn't expecting was her lifting me into the air. I tried to scream, but my voice suddenly became locked in silence. What was Diana doing? Diana made me float over to her and she smirked as we touched noses. Well, if I can't return home with the boys, I might as well return home with the power to fight back. Diana finally leaned in and kissed me. Whoa! I shut my eyes, feeling the need to bite her lips, but finding no muscles on my face and listening to my mental command. What did she do to me? I didn't want to enjoy it, but every single nerve in my body was flaring in excitement and pleasure as she kissed me. I felt my energy drain slowly, but forcefully from my body. Was she using her magic to force energy out of my body? No shit, Sherlock! It seemed like forever, but finally, Diana pulled away from a kiss with a smile and a lick of her lips. She lured me back onto the patio and chuckled. For some reason, even though nothing seemed like seemed to have changed, she looked stronger, powerful. It was almost look, like looking at a new Diana. Diana then stepped back off of the railing, making me catch my breath in my throat. As she took another step away from me, she looked to be simply walking on the night air. Diana smirked at my sudden surprise. May you never regret your choice, human. If you do, I'll happily come and take it away. With a flick of her hair, Diana turned and walked away into the night, fading into the darkness like a shadow. I watched her fade away before looking back to the man in my bed. Did I make the right choice? My heart gave a gentle thump, giving me my answer. I did, and I will never regret it for as long as I live. I walked back inside and gently crawled back into bed within the embrace of the safest arms I knew. I snuggled close to the warmth before closing my eyes. I was happy. The rest of the story can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal with school and my friends not remembering what had happened. It was as if ne magic never even happened. It was as if magic never even appeared in my l world. One thing was for certain, however, Matthew loved me and I loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other and nothing was going to take that away from us, not even time itself. Our love was so powerful, it practically overwhelmed me with joy every time I found him holding me close every morning. To think, a demon in love with a human like me, it was unthinkable, unbelievable, it was practically impossible, but it was true. The other boys decided to leave of their own accord. They knew that my future would only need Matthew at my side, so they each decided to start their own lives in the human world. Matthew understood perfectly, wishing his brothers the best. Besides, Matthew had proven to be a man by finding someone to care for. His brothers didn't need to worry about him now that he was caring for me. I felt bad as well for be being closer to Matthew than the others. But they reassured me that I was okay and that they would remain nearby should I ever need them. I was happy for that. They made me promise, however, that I would love Matthew for as long as we lived. That promise was instantly given. But what of my future? Well, it was kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to step into the light of the Anderson Toys Company and, with the help of his demon powers and leadership charisma, he managed to influence not only the entire board, but my father as well, into letting him run for CEO. I was beyond shocked. How James managed to do all that was beyond me, but when the vote was called, James had taken over the company I was destined to have. He vowed to respect the wishes for, of the late CEO and help the company m become an even grander company. For a demon, it was simple to make a company grand. My grandfather would have been proud to see how James helped it shine. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let my to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond compare. No longer would I have the future scaring me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What did I want to do? Did I want to help James build the company? Did I want to venture off on my own? Matthew reassured me that he would support me and help me through whatever I decided to do. I was grateful and I would, ne I, I would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me down from that happiness. One good afternoon, a couple, year, 
of years after the boys and I had met. I had a moment to myself, so I wandered my house and took in all that had happened as if it was all a dream. The demons, the devil, the magic. It was all surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could have been all a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that this was that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hands to my chest, relishing the feelings dancing within my soul. I let out a happy sigh before looking up and seeing where I, I had wandered to. I realized I was standing in the dining room. I stopped at the smell of baked goods. Taking a gigantic whiff, I let the smell of sugar and sweets fill my senses. Mmm. Matthew must be baking again. I tiptoed over and peeked into the kitchen, wanting to know what he was making. Almost done. I watched as Matthew started to decorate an already wonderful-looking cake with blue and white frosting. It looked delicious. I was practically salivating. However, as I watched him, I smiled. He looked so concentrated in his work. It was adorable. And there! Perfect! Matthew stepped back from the cake, allowing me to take his, to, allowing me to see his masterpiece. It was in, it indeed was perfect. I wanted a taste, and soon. That looks amazing, Matthew. What? <laughs> Matthew quickly turned to me in surprise, trying to hide the cake as I laughed. Well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not done. I, I mean, Matthew. I walked over and smiled, giving him a kiss before walking around him to the cake. Closer, it looked all the more scrumptious. What is this for? Uh, well, I mean, it's for something pretty important. I looked at Matthew, raising an eyebrow as he wrapped an arm around my waist. What is it for? Guess. I'll give you three chances. For what? What if I don't get it right? Then the cake is all mine. That's not fair. Come on. Hey, no fair. Instinctively, I wanted to pull away, but Matthew laughed and dabbed some whipped cream on my nose from a nearby decorating spatula. That is so cute. It's totally fair. Now just guess. Fine. Hmm. Is it your birthday? Matthew shook his head. Nope. Second guess. Is it an anniversary? Matthew nodded, but before I could cheer, Matthew rotated his hand, gesturing me to continue. Anniversary of? I puffed my cheeks. I could memorize facts and lessons, but dates were bad. S well, I can't memorize facts and lessons. Dates, I, I don't memorize either. It was like asking a girly girl what, when her boyfriend's frat party was. Really? Okay. Matthew laughed before he kissed my cheek, making my puffed cheeks deflate. It's the anniversary of when we first met. I had practically forgotten. He was right. It had been a couple of years since I moved in and met Matthew and his brothers. He threw a party last year for it. How could I have forgotten? Time definitely flew. Matthew. Matthew smiled at me, making my heart flutter and squee once again. I want to celebrate it every year in a different way. Next year will be something extraordinary. For now, though, this cake will do. I quickly pulled Matthew's head down with my hand and qu kissed him sweetly, wanting to show my appreciation with a kiss. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Matthew gently pulled me to him, hugging me to his chest. I nuzzled into Matthew's chest, hearing his gentle heartbeat and memorizing his temple. I love you. I love you too. Before I could finish, suddenly the cake, which had been sitting silently and peacefully on the counter, exploded into a giant mess with on it. Matthew, luckily, was quick enough to pull us back before we got hit with flying cake pieces. What the? I looked at the cake to see a very mis mischievous little creature standing over the cake, triumph triumphant at what it had done. Simon, why? You ruined the cake. I began to laugh as Matthew grew red-faced. Simon Tabby! <laughs> I quickly rushed over and grabbed Simon, who made a squeak noise in my hands. I was still giggling as Matthew came over and glared daggers at the white doll covered in cake. To calm Matthew down, however, I stretched on my toes. I stretched up on my toes and kissed him softly on my lips. Matthew stared but kissed back, not wanting to let me go without a kiss of my own. I 
love you, Matthew. Matthew sighed before smiling at me, finally calm. I love you too. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this man in my life. There were no words that could describe the emotion within me. The, the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high, all at once. Here I was, with the man I would be with forever, with the cake I would delight in, even in pieces. I gained the heart of a demon, no, of a man I loved. I vowed to cherish him, love him for the remainder of my days, and beyond. Could a demon love a human forever? I knew Matthew would. And that was my happily ever after. Woo, we finished Matthew! Okay, quick po pointing this out. See this ladder here? I'm about to show you something. I'll show you the password sometime later. Skipping that. Alright, so the bone is here. Let's click on that. <laughs> what is the angel's password? So, the letter that I pointed to you that you get at the ending, you have to do all of the routes and you get all the letters and, you, and they're going to be jumbled. So, you have to unscramble the words and you're going to get this. Trans. Form Simon. Hmm. This house seems a bit much for one person. So, this short, I don't want to spoil anything. But since we saw Simon and Tabby and Matthew's route, I decided to do this extra for you guys. Since it's Simon and Tabby we're talking about here. Huh? <laughs> oh, hello there. Aw, aren't you adorable? What are you doing here? You don't seem to be just a stuffed animal. Also, this extra is actually important for when I'm going to be playing Seduce Me 2 in Matthew's route. So, yeah. <laughs> hmm, well then, you seem interesting enough. Might as well see your true form. What the? What did you do to me? Oh my god, Simon is a human now! That's so cool. I released you from your smaller form. So much magical energy shouldn't be shoved into just a small toy. You changed me? Why? Because you shouldn't be forced to live as just a simple stuffed animal. I merely wanted to help. Well, now how am I supposed to sneak around? I'm too big now! Haha, <laughs> wow. Don't get fussy with me. You can transform back at will. I merely unlocked the door to that form. <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> what he said? Ugh, so much for generosity. I just want to get this over with. So many technicalities. <laughs> Don't give me that look. If anything, this is your fault. This is Kay, everybody. Kay, and she does not talk. Don't give me that silent treatment. I don't want this, but if this romance story needs another villain so badly, then I have no choice in the matter. However, I will come out of this victorious one way or another. I will not let my kingdom fall because of this stupid story. And we're gonna see that in the next game. You know, but I'm just gonna finish all the routes necessary first. Stubborn. As expected of you. You're as heartless as the demon lord. We know nothing about Kay, so I don't I don't know how to back you up. So I don't know how to back Kay up, because I have no idea who this person is, and I haven't really seen her talk or anything. You should probably excuse yourself now. The human will be here soon, and I want to make my entrance without you hovering over my shoulder. <sighs> this isn't what I want, but that's how the story is written. Congratulations. And that's the end. So I hope you enjoyed that extra and Matthew's route. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my videos, then subscribe. So I'll see you guys all in the next video. Bye!